Welcome to another round of the Twisted Metal Tournament. Entering the Coliseum today is the third and final of the cars that made their debut in Twisted Metal Black, the old stock car Crazy 8, which has never been a personal favorite of mine, because if we compare it to Roadkill, who is one of my favorites, we can see that statistically it is objectively worse. And you really feel that on the battlefield. However, the driver, well, you can tell just by looking at him, he's got quite a story to share. When the lights are low in this place, you get plenty of time for thinking. It beats the alternative, listening to the screams that come from every direction. Must have been years I was left alone in that darkness. But when you look like I do, it's probably for the best. My life was over, but the man who did this to me, to my face, he, he was still out there. But one day, I had a visitor. The guy's name was Calypso. He ran this freak show contest he wanted me to be a part of. If I entered and won, he said I'd taste the payback I'd been dreaming about. I just wanted to find the son of a bitch who destroyed my life. How could I refuse? The Three Crows from Blackfield Asylum make a return appearance in that little cutscene that indicates just what we're up against here. Minion is an old staple from the Twisted Metal series and the returning champion of last year's competition. Once we see him in action, it should be plainly obvious just why he won and that it's ridiculous that he was ever allowed to compete in the first place. There he is, gigantic oil tanker easily 10 times the size of anyone in this year's competition. And he's behind a force field that makes him completely impervious to all damage. He does have glowing video game weak spots. We have to destroy all four of them to deactivate that shield. Then we've got a chance at actually killing him. Taking out two is that one in the back that is a real problem for most cars. I'm gonna try and arm up before I make a run at it, and while doing so, try and keep Minion in my rear view. This is the alternate rear view that we can toggle between, as opposed to the split screen version we saw earlier. A little less obtrusive, doesn't completely blind your forward vision, but it really doesn't provide much information at all. And yet, somehow, it's still too much information with the sensory overload this game already provides, so I don't use it very often. Now I've got a charge of my special ready, and it should be the perfect tool for deactivating that shield, because it does damage to minion based on your position relative to him. Therefore, you don't have to be hyper accurate about getting that shot directly in his back, which he never leaves open to you. You can just strafe past him with the special active, and it'll hit him in the back. Now, this very often costs you life, because minion does not like when people get close to him. His retaliation is fierce. But it's usually worth it to get rid of that shield so that you can start doing actual damage to him. Now, breaking the shield alone can seem impossible to a first time player in this game. But once you're past it, you discover that the fight itself has only just begun. Minion's actual armor is quite formidable, and his damage output is incomparable. You will find, though, that as long as you move in any direction besides directly towards or away from him, he can't actually hit you. So you can move around the rim of the stadium in relative safety, collect all the arms you might need. And we need some skill-based pickups. I've noticed that you can only ever carry one skill-based pickup at a time. So if you're holding, say, a reticle and you pick up a satellite, 
the reticle will be replaced. Oh, and another aspect of Crazy 8 Special is that you can tap a direction three times, and it'll charge up the special for a brief moment. If you fire the weapon in that moment, and there's an enemy in that direction, you'll do a more powerful version of the attack. And if not, then you'll just do the regular version of the attack, so there's no drawback to trying, at least. Also, while the attack is active, you can hammer on the fire button, and if the enemy is directly in front of you at that time, every time you hit the button will do an extra bit of damage. So you can really rack up a ton of damage with one use of the special, or you can break the connection very quickly and do virtually no damage whatsoever. That special is by far the most interesting thing about Crazy 8, but the driver has all sorts of interesting stuff going for him. I really like the character of No Face, and it really seems like the developers did too. In fact, the game's manual is presented as a journal that he was assigned to write by his therapist, because he can't speak, he's got no tongue. In that journal, he explains how he's able to drive without eyes. It's that old heightened senses bullshit, of course. He also explains that it was Calypso who outfitted his vehicle and all the other vehicles with the capacity for energy attacks. So the next time an enemy goes invincible at the last second, we know who to blame. Of course, invincibility is an excellent tool to use in this fight, especially when we're on such low health. I'd like to use my rear view to aim some rear fired attacks see the enemy use them all the time, but it actually requires a pretty complicated button input. Just like our energy attacks. Our invincibility gave us a risk-free opportunity to deal the finishing blow to Minion, so it's finally time to watch our middle cutscene in its intended context. In the nut house, I was always drugged up. I never thought about what happened to me, but now that I was out, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was a boxer. You never heard of me. I was strictly small time. One night, I went up against this uh, hotshot fighter from out of state. I never even saw him coming. I got torn to pieces before the end of the first round. My jaw was shattered. My nose was broke, uh, I was a mess. And some of the guys from the gym said they knew this surgeon who could fix me up, good as new. Uh, maybe there were better doctors in town, but none that I could afford. Besides, I'd heard this guy was a big fan of the fights. Too bad old Doc made the mistake of betting on me that night. $20,000, McCutcheon. $20,000 I lost on you tonight. As I went under, all I could hear was the scraping sound of the Doc's blade and this blaring hopper music he played while he worked. When I woke up, my face felt like it had gone 15 rounds with a semi-truck. The Doc did a good job. I'll give him that. From what I hear, I went a little crazy. They say I busted up the hospital trying to find the guy. In the process, I tore up six innocent people. But now that I'm out, there ain't no place for the doc to hide. You know you're down on your luck when you end up at the mercy of the one doctor who took the Hippocratic Oath sarcastically. And you just gotta love the phrase, tore up six innocent people. And by love, I of course mean... Ugh. Those six lives are even more blood on the doctor's hands, so this is bound to be one sweet revenge. So what do you know? I was the winner. Calypso's contest was over and I was the champ. And true to his word, the man delivered the goods. I got my prize. He even had a special bonus lined up for me. It fit perfect, like we was meant to be together. I had seen fear in a man's eyes before, but this was different. This was special. 
I think that doctor, he knew payback was going to be brutal. It's funny, after all these years, I still got some snap in that left hook of mine. You know, that was the first time I ever knocked someone out with one punch. I can hardly imagine a more horrible final moment than staring at a man with a head made out of scar tissue and a fist made out of knives coming at ya. I can also hardly imagine a man more deserving of seeing such a thing. Frank knew exactly what he wanted and cut straight to the point, but as a result, that grisly tale and the massive boss fight that precipitated it has left this video a little short to be called a full episode, so I'd like to point out that our recently defeated foe, Minion, is a playable character in this game. Once you've completed story mode in its entirety with every character including the four secret characters, you are granted the opportunity to take another turn at the tournament with the ultimate killing machine, Minion. Since you have to be ridiculously good at the game just to get that far, it is quite the hard-earned easy mode. But playing as Minion is a hell of a lot of fun, so I'd like to show off some of his gameplay right now. Minion is the only character in the game with no cutscenes whatsoever, and all of his loading screens are presented in this completely uncrackable code. But he does have a story, which we'll be getting to much later on. You can put that out of your mind, and for now, just enjoy the mindless devastation he's going to wreak on our old foes. It's the first use of his special. We saw it in his boss fight. It's the tracking flamethrower. If you get too far away, he starts lobbing, holding fireballs at them as well. It's very similar in practice to Warthog's special, actually. But the automated tracking makes it much, much more useful. And it does a ton more damage, can easily kill an opponent in a single use. No matter how heavily armored they are. A small drawback, if it can even be called that, is that if you fire it when you're too far away from an opponent, it will only do the homing fireball part of the attack, won't do the flamethrower. But if you're that far away, you don't really need the flamethrower. Now the absolute optimal way to use it is to use both the flamethrower and then weave in and out of the fireball distance. Get both of those attacks landing on opponents. Now I'm just gonna drop some serious overkill on Warthog just to teach him a lesson about being a subpar, non-broken version of Minion. But even as overpowered as Minion is, if you play as recklessly as I am, still gonna get him destroyed. But he's still got access to the same number of lives and recharges as all the other vehicles would. Pretty massive advantage when he's got that much armor. Hopefully we can get some enemies to join us up here in the hospital, because if we get a charge of our special, we'll be able to make ideal use of it, and ensure that none of them leave the hospital. There's our special now. Killed about an enemy and a half for us, because they're just fish in a barrel when they're in such cramped quarters. Sweet Tooth backfiring on us. He actually managed to kill us. But the respawns dropped us right in his face with a fresh new special for him. Nice quick revenge. Really showed him who's in charge. There's actually two reasons I decided to return to the freeway to demonstrate Minion here. One of them is because the Dune Buggy Stadium is virtually identical to Minion's own stadium, and I figured he'd enjoy that. Barely even need the various pickups that are strewn about. Could really just rely on the recharging of the special. Use that to kill an enemy or two every time it pops up. 
since we have our power missiles, we can return to the first reason I'm here and show off the second reason, which is that I have all done you the great disservice of leaving a thing in this area undestroyed. You can kill that bridge. It blows up quite nicely. Although the debris does not actually harm people who are underneath it when it falls. Now if we battle our way back up to that patch of highway underneath the bridge... We can watch the train that was scheduled to cross it explode in flames. Because no form of public transportation is safe in the Twisted Metal Universe. Or any other kind of transportation if you've noticed that we've been wrecking cars left and right here. There goes one now. And of course, this game was made by David Jaffe, so there's a little family screaming every time you crash into a car. And already, only three enemies remain. They still happen to be the only three female characters in this game. Sheer coincidence. And having all three of them right here is a risk even for Minion here. Even a lucky health pickup isn't enough to save us. But the two that survived are deep into the red, and dying gave us a new special. So we don't even need to use the flamethrower part of it, just the fireballs. So there's a taste of the cathartic joy that playing as Minion can provide. Don't get too used to it though. We're going out to return to fighting an uphill battle for our lives and our next character's story.